All right, everybody, another lesson on quadratic functions and with their graphs. So you're going to need a calculator for this lesson. Before we get started with the three different forms, I want to tell you that in all three forms, standard, vertex, and intercept form, notice they all start with the letter A. That A in all three forms is going to tell you the orientation, whether or not it opens up or down. It opens up if A is positive, down if it's negative. And the shape. Um, normal would be if it has no coefficient in front um, or one. Um, and then positive or negative uh, A that is greater than one. So it could be positive two, positive five, um, negative four, positive five thirds even. Anything bigger than one is narrow. Anything less than one, positive or negative, is wide. Meaning like a fraction, one half, two thirds, something like that. Now there's three different forms. Now each one has its benefit. We can go from standard form to vertex form, standard form to intercept form. We can go from intercept form or vertex form back to standard form. We can manipulate them. Um, but when you're in each form, each one has a little shortcut. Like the y-intercept. We know the y-intercept is when x is 0, but when you're in standard form, the y-intercept is always just 0, comma whatever c is. Okay? Vertex form, if you're in vertex form, your vertex is just opposite of h, comma k. And the axis of symmetry is always a line, vertical line x equals h. And then in intercept form, uh, that's also known as factored form. Um, x-intercepts are going to just be, you know, your solutions or your zeros from when you're factoring, which is always going to happen when y is equal to zero. Okay? So, let's get started with some graphing. Again, get your calculator if you do not have it. So when we look at these, um, before we start using our calculator, I always say, list the easy stuff. So we know the orientation is going to be up, since x squared is positive. The shape is normal, because there's number, no number in front of x squared, so it's 1. And then the other thing we know is our y-intercept, which is at 0, comma, negative 1, because we are in standard form. Okay, so we are going to need a little bit of help from our calculator to answer the rest. So I will show you how to do this step by step with the calculator. And then it's going to have to be your job in the next couple of questions to do the calculator parts. I will step you through all the shortcut parts so you understand um, where the shortcuts come from. So you press your y equals. Again, make sure all your plots are turned off. And in y1, we're going to type x squared minus 2x minus 1. And i got to go back and delete one of my x's here. Okay, then uh, press Zoom 6. That'll help clarify any window issues you might have. And we have our graph. So this is what our parabola looks like. Now, of course, it says your graph should be accurate. So you can just go right ahead and press second graph and get a few table values. Um, we're going to go change my table set. I'm going to go back and start at zero. And uh, so at zero, you can see I'm at negative one. Of course, we know that because we already listed that over here as our y-intercept. Looks like we have a one, negative two. And looks like we have two, negative one. Um, we're going to have some x-intercepts pretty soon. We've got 3, comma 2. And, of course, these are always symmetrical. So if we have 3, comma 2, so if we were to just skip 1 to the left of 0, we're also going to have a negative 1, uh, comma 2. And that's pretty good. As long as we get, like, 5 points, you're good. Plus, we're going to list our x-intercepts as well. So how do we find our vertex and our axis of symmetry? Well, they're both coming from the same part. Um, so if we look at the graph again, the vertex is at our lowest point in the graph. That's called a minimum. So what you do is you take your calculator, you press second, trace, and this time number three and four are minimums and maximums. So for this, since we're at the lowest point, we're going to press number three, which is our minimum. Now it says left bound here. So you take your little blinky thing, and you're going to put it somewhere to the left of the minimum. doesn't have to be too far away. And then you press enter one time. 
and then it's going to change to right bound which means you've got to take your little blinky guy and you've got to move him to the right side of your minimum somewhere and you press enter again and then it's going to tell you to guess so when you guess that's where you try to put your put, put your little blinky thing on the minimum now remember these are not high def calculators but they'll get pretty close for you so you can assume this one point a bunch of zero six is just one and y is equal to negative two so our vertex is one comma negative two and our axis of symmetry is x equals one because the axis of symmetry is a vertical line that splits our parabola in half and it's right through the vertex okay and since we know our vertex is um, one comma negative two then it's just x equals whatever that x value is so now the last thing we need to do is we need to go find our x intercepts now to do this you want to go back to y equals and in y2 you want to put a zero and then you're gonna have to just use the intersection feature of your calculator twice so what you want to do for this is you're gonna wanna come over here and you wanna press second trace and we're going to go find the intersection, so number 5. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to put your blinky guy pretty close to that intersection of the x-axis. And you're going to press enter, and then you press enter again, and then you press enter a third time. And it's going to tell you that your first x-intercept is at negative 0, 0.414,0. Now to find your other one, you have to press second, trace, intersect again but now you have to take your little blinky guy all the way over to the right side the right intersection and you get pretty close over here press enter three more times and it's going to tell you that the other one is at 2.414 comma zero and there you go so that's how you find your x-intercepts with a calculator um, you could find the y-intercept with a calculator. Um, to do that, all you have to do is look for when x is equal to 0. That's how you find your y-intercept. So you would just press second graph, go to where x equals 0, and you know that it's minus 1. That'll work in all three forms, okay? Um, so that's it. That's how you use your calculator to accurately graph a parabola. So it's your turn, but before you get started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through some of the easy ones with you. So for number two, you should know that the shape of this is going to be narrow because there's a two and we see that it's negative, so it's going to open down. Those are two things we could always answer right off the bat. Now, you have to recognize that this is in vertex form. So the vertex, kind of like our absolute value back in the day, is opposite of what's inside. So we have x plus 3, so it's minus 3, and then comma outside, negative 2. So the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 3. Now that's a very easy thing to do when you're in vertex form, is just simply state the vertex and the axis of symmetry. It's not that easy in the other forms. So now you are going to have to use your calculator to find the y-intercept and the x-intercepts and go ahead and sketch the graph. That part's on you. So press pause, try the rest. So did you get the same thing? Um, well, your y-intercept is at 0, negative 20. All you had to do is use your calculator for that. Look at the table, find out what uh, y is when x is 0. And the x-intercepts, you should have found that there are none. And you could have thought about that right off the bat once you placed your vertex at negative 3, negative 2, and it opens down. You see it's never even going to cross the x-axis, so it has no x-intercepts. All right? So let's go do it again. Um, one last time, but now we're going to start in intercept form. Again, I will step you through the easy stuff. Orientation, we know it's going to open up. The shape is wide because it is a fraction. The axis of symmetry and vertex, you're going to need to use your calculator to find. The y-intercept as well, but your x-intercepts are done for you because we are in intercept form. It is opposite of what's here, so we're going to have negative 4, 0 and a negative 1, 0. So we already know that we're going to be placing those on the graph for sure. Okay, so our vertex is going to be somewhere in between negative 4 and 1, negative 1. 
And uh, I'm sure if you think hard enough, you know the X coordinate of that vertex, but you do need both. So go ahead, press pause, and find all the rest of the stuff again. All right, check it. Uh, the vertex is negative 2.5 comma negative 0.75. Your y-intercept is at 0 0.1333 or 4 thirds. And of course your axis symmetry is x is equal to negative 2.5. And your graph should look exactly like mine. Yes, you do need to graph your dashed axis of symmetries. Okay, um, so now we're going to talk about rearranging and putting some of these quadratics back in standard form. Um, so the first one, all you have to do is uh, FOIL and distribute. So it doesn't matter which order you want to do it first. So we can just say that this is y is equal to 2. And then we have our x squared minus 7x plus 6 after we FOIL these guys. And then we just distribute the 2. And we have y is equal to 2x squared minus 14x plus 12. And now you are in standard form. Number five is your turn. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to have to FOIL the 8x minus 1 with itself because we have the squared. And distribute, combine your like terms, and you'll have that one. So your turn. All right. You should have y is equal to 32x squared minus 8x minus 1. Uh, the first thing you had to do is FOIL 8x minus 1 with itself because it's squared on the outside. You get 64x squared minus 16x plus 1. Distribute your 1 half, combine your like terms by 1 half minus 3 halves, and you get your minus 1, and you are done. So that's how we work from, you know, one of our other forms working into standard form. Um, standard form to intercept form is pretty simple. That's just factoring, and to get to vertex form, that's going to be called completing the square, which you will learn in another uh, video or two. So the last question is a word problem. And it's about a woodland jumping mouse, and he can jump pretty high. Um, he can jump by the model negative 2 ninths x times x minus 6, where x and y are measured in feet. So this is a calculator problem. All you have to do for this problem is type this equation in your graphing calculator and try to analyze it. So I'm going to let you do that part on your own. Type it in the calculator and see if you can analyze this and we'll talk about it in just a few seconds when you're done and you click play again. So um, if you used your graphing calculator, I just uh, altered my window a little bit so it's easier to see. Um, all you have to do is really analyze what you saw there. So you can see that it starts at the origin and it lands at 6, 0. Well, you could do that a few ways. You can use your calculator by just pressing second table and going to look and you see that this is where he's at a level of zero and this is where he lands again. So that would be a distance he can, uh, you know, jump six feet long. Okay, and all you had to do was look at where he started at zero and where he lands at six. And then how high did he jump? Well, that you had to find your maximum in this case. So um, I used my graphing calculator to find the maximum, which it gave me as 3 comma 2. So that means he can jump 2 feet high. Not 3 feet high, 2 feet high, because 2 is our y distance up and down. Okay, so for a teeny tiny mouse, that's, uh, that's pretty good. So that takes us to the end of this lesson. Again, um, working with all three forms, uh, each form has its benefit, but your graph and calculator can handle everything for you, so make sure you use it. All right? Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. This is Longo, and I am out. See you. Bye.